So I'm not going to make an entire video about this because I really only have one point to make here. And that is that the officiating at the end of that Bucks heat game last night was disgusting. The Heat deserved to win the game, so I'm glad that the outcome came out the way that it did, but Jimmy Butler got fouled on the trap in the corner that resulted in the Brook Lopez layup. Goran Dragic contested that three by Chris Middleton absolutely perfectly, and they called a foul. And yeah, Giannis touched Jimmy Butler with the back of his hand like he was passing him in a supermarket, but that's not a foul. And regardless, yeah, like I'm glad the Heat won. They deserved to win the game. They got screwed over by a couple of calls that even got to that point, but it was really, really bad. Anyway, welcome back, everybody. My name is Tucker, and today we're going to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder, a team that has one of the most interesting paths, if not the most interesting path, moving forward in the NBA because they had a season this year that was incredibly surprising. They actually had a better winning percentage this year after trading away Paul George and Russell Westbrook than they had in either of the two previous seasons. And they've got all these future assets and a nice mix of veterans currently on the roster that allow them to kind of have the best of both worlds moving forward. So it's really interesting and difficult to kind of figure out what specific direction this team is going to take moving forward. And we're going to talk about all those different options in today's video. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day and leaving a like rating is a great way to let me know that you are enjoying the content and it helps out the video a ton as well. With that said, let's go and get started. So as I said, the Thunder had a really, really great year. When you consider the things that they traded away, the assets that they got in return, and then to still have such a good season and almost make it to the second round of the postseason is really, really impressive. And the, the question now is, where do they want to go from here? Do they want to continue to be a good team while they let all these other assets develop behind the scenes? Or do they want to go all in towards the future and trade away some of these veterans? Those are the options we're going to talk about in this video. So as we go into this offseason for the Thunder, the biggest question is what to do about Danilo Gallinari. He is an unrestricted free agent this offseason. He was part of the Paul George trade, and he's a really good scorer and player when he's healthy, and he's been healthy the last couple of seasons. So that's been good to see because he is such a good player, and he's an important part of this team. And the options here are either to let him go somewhere else in free agency, re-sign him, or come up with some kind of sign and trade for him. And I would anticipate that they're gonna get some kind of value in return for Gallinari because they could have moved him at the trade deadline for something and they decided not to. And as I said, he was a part of the Paul George trade. So they're not just gonna let him walk for nothing. At least I don't think so. So they're either going to re-sign him to a fair deal or they're going to try and work out some kind of sign and trade for him. And if they do either of those things, either re-sign him or do the sign and trade, then they won't have any cap space this offseason. They're going into this offseason with about $107 million in payroll. And regardless, either of those two options, whether it's the salaries they get in return or the salary of Gallinari, will take up all their cap space. But it's not really the end of the world because they don't really have any other significant free agents this offseason other than Andre Roberson and Nerlens Noel, neither of which are really super critical to this team. I would imagine they want to bring back Noel, but Roberson has really been a bit of a struggle for him due to injury uh, recently. So not a huge deal there. Now, what I would anticipate that the Thunder do here is just re-sign Gallinari. Unless they see a sign and trade that they really, really like, reselling Gallinari allows them to do a couple of things. One, it doesn't mess with what they have going here where they were a good team and they can win, you know, close to 50 games again next year in the Western Conference, depending on how many games we play next year, while also having the ability to move him either at the deadline if the season doesn't go well or in exchange for a star because having those types of middling salaries on your roster, guys like him, guys like Dennis Schroeder, even Steven Adams to a certain extent, even though his salary is much, much higher, makes it easier to make a potential trade for a star, which is always gonna be a possibility for this Thunder team because the young players on the roster and more importantly, the draft picks that they have at their disposal. So re-signing Gallinari to a deal in the 15 to $20 million range is a good idea on a couple of fronts. One, it helps their roster, but two, it makes a trade a little bit easier to facilitate down the road. So I would imagine that's what they're gonna do. Now, as we talk about some of those star trades, the question right now for the Thunder or for any other team is who is that guy gonna be that you're going to trade for? Obviously, Bradley Beal is the big name right now, but it seems unlikely that Washington is gonna be willing to deal him at the moment. And outside of that, there's really not that many 
star players to be trading for because so many of them are free agents in the summer of 2021. Now, to be fair, last offseason, I wouldn't have thought that the Thunder would have been trading away Russell Westbrook or Paul George. So you never know what can happen in the NBA and things can change completely overnight. And there could be seven stars traded this offseason for all I know. But right now, it's a little bit difficult for teams like the Thunder, teams like the Pelicans that have all these assets. It's a bit difficult to find the guy that's worth trading some of those assets for to kind of build up your team. So right now, it's actually really difficult to kind of evaluate where the Thunder are going to go from here because I think it's going to be difficult for them to make the decision to trade either Chris Paul or Danilo Gallinari after such a successful season. And so more than likely, like I said, they'll bring back Gallinari, they'll keep Paul this offseason, and they'll reevaluate things at next trade deadline. If things don't go well, then they can look at moving those guys. But I think for now, they're going to run it back. However, as we look towards the 2021 offseason, that is a huge one for the Thunder. Steven Adams, Dennis Schroeder, Diallo, and Chris Paul, if he opts out of his player option, will all be free agents in that offseason, which creates a ton of cap space for this team. But also, those are good players, and ideally, they would be able to re-sign re them. Now, I would be shocked if Chris Paul opts out of his deal. It's worth like 40 something million dollars. He's probably going to opt in and become a free agent in the off season of 2022. But those other guys, most notably Adams and Schroeder are valuable not only to this team, but also potentially in a trade. So I wouldn't be surprised to see those guys moved before that off season. But if they're not, like I said, the Thunder are gonna have significant cap space in an off season in which it's really good to have significant cap space. And generally you wouldn't consider the Thunder to be a huge free agency destination. And I don't think that they are, but having Chris Paul on the roster and all of these future assets and Shea Gilgis Alexander, the opportunity to bring in a star certainly changes some things. If we get to the summer of 2021 and there are a couple of guys that are interested in playing with Chris Paul, even though he is much older at this point in his career, the Thunder have a sales pitch of being able to bring in one, maybe two max free agents while Shea Gildas Alexander is still on his rookie deal. Chris Paul will still be there and they could potentially make a move for a third guy as well if they wanted to. And even if they're not able to bring in two max players, they could facilitate a trade with all those picks and potentially create a super team. I don't think that's a likely scenario at all because it is Oklahoma City, and I don't think that that is going to be a huge destination for guys to want to come and play, but it is at least an option, assuming that they're willing to let both Adams and Schroeder walk in that offseason or that they don't trade him for other salaries beforehand. Now, with all of that said, as you go into the 2022 offseason, Chris Paul will officially be a free agent at that point. And I would imagine that whatever he resigns for will be much, much smaller than the deal that he will be coming off of. So regardless, even if the Thunder do keep him, even if he is still on the roster, they haven't traded him at that point, they will have a ton of cap space, assuming they did not use it the year before. So essentially what it comes down to right now for the Thunder is they have a lot of options moving forward. It begins this offseason with what to do about Danilo Gallinari. And I think that's really going to provide us a lot of insight in terms of what this team is thinking for their future. If they bring him back, then they're looking at potentially being another, uh, having another good year next year, just like they did this year. And then potentially maybe trading some guys at the trade deadline. If they don't bring him back or they go ahead and sign and trade him, then that shows me that they're probably going to be looking to move Chris Paul before his deal expires. And they're looking way, way towards the future. But no matter what for the Oklahoma City Thunder, they have positioned themselves almost accidentally really, really well for the future because I'm sure at the time they weren't all that excited about trading away Paul George and Russell Westbrook, but the amount of value they got in return for those guys allows them to do pretty much anything they want to moving forward. Shea Gildas Alexander is really the trump card here as well because he, I think, is going to be a future All-NBA caliber guy, and so they not only have those future picks and everything like that, but they also have a player they can build around with or without Chris Paul on the roster. So this is a great situation for Oklahoma City. They have cap space, they have picks, they have a guy they can build around and it's going to be really really exciting to see what they can do with it and another positive is i have confidence in the front office and sam presti to be able to make something happen out of this group what exactly it's going to be i don't know because it's really difficult to anticipate what stars they could potentially be trading for but regardless they have the opportunity to be a really really good potentially championship level team for a long long time if they play their cards right and yeah there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and i thank you all very much for watching once again my name is tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and i'll see you all next time